So there's other um, information that's starting to come to light as well, because uh, how Brian Koberger just flew under the radar for so long, right? All the way up until he was arrested and became one of the most infamous people in the country. That is a topic um, on its own right. And we're, we're so glad that the Law and Crime Network actually did this deep dive into all aspects of Brian Koberger's life from his past, his neighbors, the schools he attended, and to how his criminology studies may have actually played into these crimes if in fact he is guilty. Take, take a look at this. The course that I took that stands out is psychological sleuthing, where you basically enter the mind of a killer. She would give you sheets, and basically the sheets would denote and detail um, a crime However, you wouldn't know who did what per se or where this was, but you'd have to, it was a group thing, so you'd get partnered up or in groups, and you would go through these um, activities and basically come up with a, a theory or a thesis and then challenge it to uh, Dr. Ramsland. All right, I want to bring in Sierra Gillespie. She's the Law and Crime Network reporter behind this investigative mini documentary. And Sarah, it's so interesting to hear that interview because the person who we just heard from is a former classmate of Brian Koberger's at DeSales University. And they took a course together under the professor and forensic psychologist named Catherine Ramsland. She's uh, famous in this, this um, particular area of study. Talk to me a little bit more about that course that they were in together. So the course they were in together is called Psychological Sleuthing. You heard it there from Josh Ferraro, who, like you said, a classmate at DeSales University with Brian Koberger. So Koberger actually studied there for his undergraduate and graduate degrees. He received his master's degree in criminal justice from that school. The interesting thing about DeSales is that it is known for criminal justice. So that's actually a reason why a lot of students go there, because they have these world-renowned professors like Do Dr. Catherine Rams, and also they have a hands-on program. This is something that's very unique to DeSales University. They actually have a crime house. So some of the students can go into this house, get hands-on experience, you know, kind of like CSI type work where they can work with rudimentary DNA, put together some clues, maybe do some interviews. So it is fair to say that Brian Koberger may have had some quote unquote hands-on experience in the criminal justice field in his study at DeSales. You know, it's, it's fascinating, Sierra, to imagine that he and these other students would be sort of plotting through a house, likely the other students, you know, for, for the right reasons, and potentially, if Brian Koberger is guilty for very, very sinister reasons, um, literally getting training on, on how to commit a crime. I do want to ask you a little bit about the professor, Catherine Ramsland. Um, in your uh, incredible deep dive. She actually does a talk. Um, it's a law and crime podcast where she discusses psychopaths. And this is about seven months before the Moscow murders happened. Let, let's take a look at that. Have I come face to face with psychopaths? Absolutely. The coldness, the lack of remorse, definitely. Um, so some people, yeah, some people call that evil, but we are finding that it might very well be a brain disorder. It allows them to be better predators if that's what they choose to be. Not all psychopaths are criminals, not all psychopaths are murderers, but if they choose that, it allows them to be very effective at it because they really don't have any remorse over what they're doing. And they really can be very calculated. They tend to be very reward driven. So, Sierra, the natural um, inclination would be for all of us to talk to Dr. Ramsland about um, her former student, and that's just a non-starter. With Dr. Katherine Ramsland, it is a non-starter. I reached out to her personally, and I got a one-line email that said, I will not be discussing the Brian Koberger case, and other reporters I spoke with received similar emails. It's just lucky that she appeared on Long Crime Network about seven months before the murders, and we have her on because she is an expert in the field. She is an expert forensic psychologist, so we wanted to talk with her, pick her brain about it, and then months later, we find out one of her former students is accused of of this heinous crime. So it's kind of interesting how that played out. Sarah, we've got a picture up on the screen and I'm gonna ask our control room to drop the banner. Um, and I want you to tell me the significance. I'd never seen this photograph until I saw your work, but it appears that he's actually maybe in a classroom and taking notes, but he doesn't look a whole lot different than he does in the most recent pictures that we've seen him. And that is of course in a, in a jail jumpsuit, but give me the background behind this, this photograph. 
So this is a photo from Josh Ferraro, that classmate that we heard sound from at the start of this segment. He and Brian Koberger worked on a project in 2018. It actually wasn't criminal justice related. It was biology. They were lab partners for an entire semester. And this photo and one other were actually shown in their report that they presented in front of the entire class. And actually, when I saw Brian Koberger appear in court in Pennsylvania at the top of the year, he didn't look much different from that photo. Very skinny, very similar. So that's what Brian Koberger, Brian Koberger yeah, it, looks like at this point. It's fascinating, though, to hear the source uh, from the jail saying, you know, in the pictures that I saw on TV, you look like a toothpick. That was the description we got. Look like a toothpick. In person, um, the source says he looks so much bigger. He looks like he's over 200 pounds. I don't know if he's gained weight while in jail, um, but Larry, you know, Levine said you tend to lose weight and he's on the vegan diet. But it's I can't wait to see him when he finally makes an appearance. Uh, Sierra Gillespie, thank you so much for being on. Really appreciate it. Great work. Of course. Thanks for having me. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.